What, we some kind of suicide squad? I am Iron Man. You are a toy! I live my life a quarter mile at a time. Server Anakin! I have the high ground! I'm gonna steal the Declaration of Independence. I'm simply saying that life, uh, finds a way. Welcome back to the Big Movie Boys podcast, the only podcast made up entirely of found footage. I'm your host, Jeremy Bauman, and with me as always is Bob, the president of the Dane Dufan Club, Liebel. How's everybody doing out there today? I'm just going to start the podcast off with a quick note. I think Dane Duhan will win an Oscar within five years. <laughs> I'm going to disagree with you there. Joined as well by Ben, the Blair Stitch Project, Stitch. What's going on? Dane Duhan is not going to win an Oscar <laughs> in, at any point in his career. We've got a lot to talk about this week, including our thoughts on the most recent season of Rick and Morty. We'll be playing a little game of Six Degrees of Mark Wahlberg, and we'll be giving you what will likely be our most divisive review of the beloved 2012 movie, Chronicle. But first, I would encourage anyone listening to the Big Movie Boys podcast to check out blacklivesmatters.carrd.co. From there, you can find all sorts of information, including protest locations, petitions to sign, phone numbers to text or call, organizations to donate to, and many more ways to help the Black Lives Matter movement. It will be the first link in the description of this episode. Something else that might resonate with listeners of a movie podcast, Warner Brothers has just made their movie Just Mercy, which came out uh, limited in December, but then had a wide release in January of this year. It is now free to rent for the month of June. If you're not familiar with it, Just Mercy stars Michael B. Jordan, Jamie Foxx, and Brie Larson, and, in, and is about a world-renowned civil rights defense attorney, Brian Stevenson, who works to free a wrongly condemned death row prisoner. I just watched it, and I thought it was very good. Um, outside of current events, I would recommend it. I think it was a well-made, well-acted movie, and it's free to rent for the rest of the month. Um, it is available on Apple TV, Fandango Now, Google Play, Amazon Prime Video, Redbox, the PlayStation Store, Vudu, Microsoft, and YouTube. That's all per Business Insider. I can vouch for Amazon Prime Video. That's where I watched it. If you're taking this time to self-reflect and to educate, then and you also like watching movies, as I assume you would if you're listening to a movie podcast, then I would highly recommend adding this to all of that. So with that, Bob... I think it's going to be a very Bob-centric podcast. You wanted to talk about our very first topic today, which is this past season of Rick and Morty. I did. It was, to me, I was like, I started watching Rick and Morty when season three first came out, and I like, I was obsessed with it. Right, like, I this is literally my favorite show. And then I waited forever for this season to come out, and I was just pretty let down. And we all watch it, and I just want to know what you guys thought of it, because like me, Jen, like. If I had to talk about the whole season as a whole, I would call it a letdown. Now, do you think that's because it was like you had only one a week, you couldn't just binge it? Yeah, but yeah, that's true because when I first started watching it, I, season one and two were on Hulu. I watched those straight through, and then I watched weekly season three when it was on TV. But something about this, and it was only five, you had five episodes, and then you had what was like a two month break or however, and then you got yeah, back with those I other five. I already forgot about every episode that came out in 2019. One. Yeah, but I just thought the whole season was so underwhelming, and I don't know if it's because it's gotten to a point where I, like, hold this show... Like, higher standards. Yeah, like yeah. Higher, yeah high, in high regard, and, like, it's nothing but, like, perfection is going to disappoint me. I did like the season finale, though. Loved it. It was actually one of my favorite episodes. But the thing I like about that is when it's, like, that serialized format where they're talking about things that happen in other episodes, and it's not just a one-off. I think every time they do that, that's the best. It's one of their better episodes. That's why I like the one episode. I think to start season three, where like they save Rick, and it's like a continued uh, Mm -hmm. episode from the previous season finale, the cliffhanger. But like, yeah, season four was just more. It was more they were just trying to like do completely different things, which is what they do. But it just didn't work as well. I don't know. They went too crazy for me. That's fine, but when. You wait years and years for the show. Yeah. Like, I want it to be, like, a serialized format. Like, I, I want every episode to be as good as I thought the season finale was. And they, what did they get renewed for? Like, didn't don't they have, like, 80 episodes coming out now or something? I have no idea. Adult Swim, so they signed a contract where they have, like, they're, they're signed for, like, way more episodes. So it's going to be, like, 30 more years before like yeah, how they always episodes say. come out? Yeah. So it's like, okay, like, you have this deal where you have 
I got job security, but like you know that you're going to be making this many more episodes. It's not sort of like season by season anymore, like it used to be. So like, why not? I don't know. Make it more of a storyline. Yeah, that's because that's the episodes I like the most are the ones that are a continued storyline. And the whole season, you didn't get it until the final episode, which was a little annoying. Yeah, for me, I mean, I've seen every episode. I like the show. I'll continue watching it as long as they make it. I don't think I hold it in as high regards as a lot of people who watch it. I know there's a very vocal following for this show who consider it, you know, the best show ever. You mm-hmm. need a 300 IQ to even understand the show. Maybe I'm just not smart enough to, to appreciate That's it. That's probably it. But I've seen every episode. I've only seen a handful of episodes a second time. And like I said, I, I enjoy it, but I wasn't as disappointed probably just because I don't feel as invested. That being said, I do think it was one of the lower tier seasons overall. Although there were episodes in there that I really liked. That's kind of how I feel, because I just started it when you guys, I think, recommended it to me a couple of weeks ago. So I, I just came in fresh now, binge-watched the whole thing. And so season four is, like, a little lesser. But, yeah, like, Jerry, I don't think of it as, like, this greatest show ever. So I don't, I wasn't, like, too upset with it. You did it similar to how I did it when I watched the first two seasons, I binged them, and then it was watching the season three when it was, currently it was coming on TV. Out, yes. And you got to do binge first three and then watch four. But... I don't know, like, uh, it's, it was really, it's gotten to the point now where so many people watch it, and it's, like, kind of, like, I don't know, not too popular, but, like, before when I watched it, I, like, thought it was, like, a sleeper hit, and I was like, oh, look, I'm, I'm watching this show, like, not many people are watching it, like, no, everybody's, like, missing out on this, you almost feel like you found something, but now it's so popular, and I don't know, it's, like, not as cool to be, like, a fan of Rick and Morty, because everybody is. Yeah. yeah. There's a part of me that's almost embarrassed to say that I watch Rick and Morty. Like, I, the, yeah. the fandom around it has been so toxic in the past that... Absolutely. It's almost embarrassing to say that you watch it. I don't think that's fair to the show or the people who make it, who are obviously making a good show. I mean, you can't blame them for the people jumping on mm-hmm. McDonald's counters, begging for Szechuan yeah. sauce. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, I mean, even still... It, as much as I do enjoy it, and like I said, I'll keep watching it as long as they make it. I haven't checked out Solar Opposites or whatever the other... It looks like the same show. Yeah. Right? Just without Rick and Morty. Just right. on the <laughs> alien side of it, yeah. I don't think I'll even... I, I would wait until someone recommends it to me. That's what it'll take for me to watch Last year, though? Or not last year. Whenever. Three years ago, whenever the last season of Rick and Morty came out. If that had come out then, I probably would have watched it, because that's when I was really into it. But this season was a letdown, so it kind of not turned me off, but I don't, I'm not going to watch that show. Yeah, I, I didn't even know that Rick and Morty had 80 more episodes to go or whatever. So yeah, it's they, kind of exciting, though, because, like, every show kind of has, like, a lower season. That makes it, they, they can bounce back from that. They were, they were doing it season by season, and that's apparently the reason why it was taking so long to, like, come out with new episodes, and you had, like, years of layoff between, because they didn't have, like, a definitive deal, but they did sign one. I don't, I want to say it's 80. It might be 75, but it's, like, a ridiculous amount, like, and if they continue to do 10 episode seasons, like, they're... They have a, a lot more room to play with now. That's, uh, I mean, any is there any indication on when the next season is going to be here? I don't know. We'll get the stats department to check that out for us. <laughs> the exact number of episodes they got renewed for. We'll but report back next week when we, uh, Actually, when we no, figure yeah, that out. When we do research. But, um, no, I, I would assume they're going to come out more frequently because of that deal, but... Probably not. Probably going to be like fucking three years again. <laughs> yeah, when did it start? Because I just started it. 2013? Really? In those four years yeah. and seven years? Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. It might even be 2012. It could be bad. It's, but it's, yeah, it's been on TV for... I like how they acknowledge it in the... There's an episode where they're like, come back and watch it like a year and a half from now or yeah. whenever we have it. <laughs> I like at least that they acknowledge that. I do think that uh, there are some really great episodes in that show, which is the reason I keep going back to mm-hmm. it, even if I don't hold the show as highly as other people there's certainly episodes where i think their genius does shine through yeah, and yeah. people who are actually stupid will think that you need to be smart to understand <laughs> it but, uh, it's so funny but yeah that's uh i mean i don't have too much to say on rick and morty just in general but and there wasn't a ton of other movie related news um so we're instead just going to play a game this was another bob suggestion i told you it's going to be a bob heavy <laughs> episode and so we've all heard of, or even played, Six Degrees of Kevin Bacon. And I don't know about you guys, but I feel like I'm a little too young. I don't honestly know too many Kevin Bacon movies Full besides Footloose kind of, yeah, and whatever yeah. X-Men movie he was in. Yeah, that's about it. So what, what we do know is Mark Wahlberg. 
So we're gonna, That's an understatement. We're yeah. going to put a big movie boy twist on the classic Six Degrees of Kevin Bacon. We're going to play Six Degrees of Mark Wahlberg. For reference on IMDb, IMDb, Kevin Bacon has 94 acting credits. Mark okay. Wahlberg has 76. Right. So I, we're in the same ballpark. That's, yeah. yeah. Um, the way it's going to work is we're going to work collaboratively. I've got a random actor generator, and I'm just going to randomly pick an actor. And we're going to try to work together to connect that actor to Mark Wahlberg in six movies or less. We're going to try to do it successfully five times. Um, but if it takes us more than ten tries, then we're just going to consider ourselves failures and move on. And next week we'll come with a formal apology to Mark <laughs> Wahlberg. <laughs> so let's see who the first actor we're going to try to connect to Mark Wahlberg is. Please be Dane Duhon. Please be Dane Duhon. <laughs> Very first actor randomly generated is George Clooney. Okay. Okay, all George right. Clooney. That's a we know him. Okay. You got all the Oceans movies to work with. Yeah. That's a big ensemble right mm-hmm. there. Right to Matt Damon. We and can... then I go to Departed. So Shh. George Clooney <laughs> was in Oceans Eleven with Matt Damon, who was in The Departed with Mark Wahlberg. Wow. There we go. That's a good start. Did, a nice little did start. you even think it just <laughs> was it second nature? That was amazing. Man, we might connect everything wow. to the departed. Wow. Well, I thought we weren't going to get any of these. One so, for one. Yeah. yeah I'm, Hopefully we can keep this going. Was that two moves? Does that count as two? That was two movies. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, wow. There we go. Uh, next actor randomly generated. Russell Crowe. Okay. Was he in the, was he he was the in departed? <laughs> <laughs> Russell Crowe. I feel like he was in a fucking movie with Mark Wahlberg. Russell Crowe was in, he was in uh, Gladiator. Who else is in Gladiator? Let's I didn't just, see that movie. I've been Gladiator, but I don't know if I can name too many other actors. Russell Crowe was in... Let's just think of movies Russell Crowe was in. I don't know too many. Russell okay, the only Crow Russell Crowe movie I know is Gladiator. That's why I said <laughs> it. Fuck. No, um, um, Russell Crowe, he's famous. Come on. Yeah, he's very famous. He's probably uh, in a lot more movies than Gladiator. He was in A Beautiful Mind. Um, another guy was in A Beautiful Mind <laughs> oh, is... God. Who's the guy that plays uh, Jarvis and uh, uh, Vision? Paul Bettany. Okay, Paul Bettany. So, A Beautiful Mind with... Um, Come on, I Paul don't know Bettany. Paul Bettany. And then, Paul, we're in the MCU. Paul Bettany, yeah. And then... We go to right to Black Panther. Uh, yes, yes. Paul, Infinity War. Paul Bettany was oh, okay. in Infinity War. With Winston Duke. With Winston Duke. Who was in Spencer Confidential, Confidential with Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> so how many movies was that? Uh, we went that from A Beautiful five? Mind to Infinity Paul... War. Paul, no, Paul Bettany... Was, was in, in, yeah, it, so oh, yeah. yeah, to Infinity War, to Black Spencer, Panther, uh, to Black Panther, right? We don't need it. No, we can put oh, it on there. Okay, yeah, gotcha, gotcha, okay. So what was that? How many movies? Three, Three, movies? Three movies. Dear God. <laughs> oh my God. Wow, we weren't confident there we going go. into that. Wow, this is easy as <laughs> shit. <laughs> we might knock five out. We might go for ten. Five for five. <laughs> okay, okay so. next randomly generated actor, <laughs> Come Sylvester on. Stallone. Oh, <laughs> Okay, one of my favorite actors. Um, I could, he I was could get us back to Spencer Confidential. <laughs> yeah, that could, seems too easy. Yeah, we'll, we'll try not to do that. Okay, so Sylvester Stallone was in uh, Creed. I know where you're going, Bob. That's I'm, I'm, I'm going to steer it away from there, though. I'm going to okay. try to steer it away. So he was in Creed with Michael B. Jordan. Michael B. Jordan. I'm going to try to bring in Dane Duhon. <laughs> <laughs> Michael B. Jordan was in Chronicle with Dane Duhon. Dane Duhon was in... Name another Dane Duhon movie. That's the only one I know is Place Beyond the He was in Amazing Spider-Man 2 oh, yeah. with Emma Stone. How many, what are we at here? Was, Jeremy, are you keeping track? I think this is four. We gotta go, no, so we went from uh, Creed to, well, Michael B. Jordan to Chronicle to... Um, Second Spider-Man to movie, so we're at Amazing three. Spider-Man we're 2. At three. Okay, so we, I'm either thinking Emma Stone or Andrew Garfield, we can definitely pull something in off that. I feel like Emma Stone's been in a movie with Mark Wahlberg. What else has Andrew so, Garfield been in? The Social Network? The Social Network. Oh, God. I don't think uh, Justin Timberlake was, was in any movie. <laughs> was Justin Timberlake or Jesse Eisenberg in a movie with Mark Wahlberg? No. Shoot. Um, well, if we went Emma Stone, I feel like was she was in Superbad. Was uh, anybody in that in a Mark Wahlberg movie? I don't have a good memory of Superbad. Michael Sarah. Definitely is not in a Mark Wahlberg movie. <laughs> Jonah Hill. Seth Rogen. Okay, hold on, I got it. Jonah Hill was in that movie. He was also in The Wolf of Wall Street. 
We're departed. <laughs> to the departed. <laughs> I think that's over. That's yeah, over. That's, that's over six. Much. Okay, let's reel back in. Let's take out Dan Duhon. I think that's the, the cog in the machine. <laughs> um, it always is. It, it's always an issue when you include Dan Duhon. <laughs> All right, so wh- where are we starting? Are we sticking with Creed? No, let's let's try to get away from Creed. We could do on any of the Rocky movies. Um, the Expendables? Yeah, the you're Expendables right. Let's start with that because there's a million people in that. Is Mark Wahlberg in the Expendables? <laughs> Is he? <laughs> I think he is. <laughs> no, he's not. Somebody. Okay, no, he's got to be. He's not in the movie. Well, they're coming out the third Expendables three: Battle for Boston. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, there might be three Expendables movies for all I know. There's probably like ten. Okay, um, <laughs> dude, there's somebody in the Expendables that's in a movie. Who's directly. in the Expendables? Everybody. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Jason Statham. Let's just pick. Let's pick a direction. Okay. Let's. Let's, just, let's go, Jason Statham. Okay. Expendables with Jason Statham. Got, okay. I got it. I got it. Expendables with Jason Statham. Jason Statham is in Hobbs and Shaw with The Rock, who is in Pain and Game with Mark Wahlberg. There we go. That was good. I love it. That, that was, was good. Was wow. Was it four? Three or four? Yeah. I think it was three. So we went from Expendables, Stallone with Statham, Statham to The Rock in Hobbs and Shaw. Hobbs and Shaw. The Rock and to three. Pain and Yeah, three. My three. God, we don't need six. We are killing it right <laughs> now. Six is too many. Okay. Ooh, I like this one. Next randomly generated actor, and there are actors okay. on here as well, but our fourth male actor, Gary right, Oldman. All right, okay. here we go. I got you. Dark Knight mm-hmm. was also with, uh, how do we get, that's easy, right? Aaron Eckhart. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know any of those. No, 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 Mark Wahlberg, uh, Christian Bale in Dark Knight, he's in uh, the, fighter. the Fighter. That there was we go. easy, yeah. There we go. Was that two? Gary Oldman was in the Dark Knight with... Christian Bale. Christian Bale. Christian Bale was in the fight with Mark Wahlberg. Mark Wahlberg. That's My two. God. That's two right there. That's what I was thinking of, but... I was going to connect it to Michael Caine somehow. We didn't even need to. Get lost. All right, so we're, we're not going to go to Spencer <laughs> Confidential again. We're starting with Robert Downey Jr. Okay. He was Sherlock Holmes. He was Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> with Jude Law. This is Watson, right? In Sherlock Holmes? I don't yeah. Know. I believe he is. Jude Law. Jude Law was in... He was in a movie with Matt Damon, but we can't. We're not doing this Jude, part. Of- Jude Law was in Contagion. There's so many actors in Contagion. We can go off of that. Lawrence Fishburne. Let's see. Um, Matt Damon is also. Damon. Damon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Unintentionally um, doing. Wait, wait, wait. We gotta do Robert Damon. Downey Jr. Yeah. Oh, to Mark Wahlberg. I was about to relate Robert Downey Jr. back to Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say Gwyneth Paltrow's in there. She's an Iron Man. That's there we go. That counts. Oh. Oh, no, it was, it, was, it was the wrong way. I was, and then we were going to Matt Damon. Okay. I got lost. I'm in getting in Matt a, Damon confused. I got lost in a <laughs> circle. All right. Okay, what do we have? I feel like <laughs> Contagion, we can go off of Contagion. Okay. What, do we, what movie did we start with? Uh, Sherlock, <laughs> Sherlock Holmes, Holmes Jude, Jude Law, Law okay. Contagion. Contagion. Which has a bunch of people and Matt Damon, but we don't want to keep falling yeah. back in. <laughs> Gwyneth Paltrow's in it. Lawrence Fishburne's in it. I feel like we can go with Gwyneth Paltrow. Um, isn't Gwyneth Paltrow was in a movie with Aaron Eckhart? I just want you guys to know that. I know another, Aaron, I know another Aaron Eckhart <laughs> isn't movie. Uh, um, Leonardo DiCaprio's wife in Inception in Contagion? She is. Marion Cotillard? Yeah. yeah. She's in Contagion. Yep. And then. Well, we could go to Christian Bale, but. So we can go to Inception from there. Inception, yeah. From Inception. Is Tom Hardy in any Mark Wahlberg movies? Joseph Gordon-Levitt. See, all these movies could go back to The Dark Knight, but we can't do that again. We can repeat one. <laughs> We're doing so well, I think we should. That's true, we should repeat. try not to. Um, what are we at right now? Sherlock Holmes. Jude Law, Contagion. Contagion, and then Inception with Marion Cotillard. And then Ken Watanabe. Saito? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> How the hell would we connect him? He's in a bunch of movies. Okay, let's think. Um, let's think. Joseph Gordon-Levitt. He was in The Dark Knight Rises. <laughs> <laughs> he was. In... That's he different. Was in that we can shit, do that. He was in that shitty Looper movie with uh, Bruce Willis. Can we connect Bruce Willis to him? Well, let's go off of Dark Knight Rises. Christian Bale, the fighter. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> That seems cheap. When you play Six Degrees of Kevin Bacon, you're allowed to go with... Yeah, you. Oh, we're going to try not to repeat him, but 
we took like four movies to get to that. I think we're yeah. Fine. We didn't just right. go right so, to it. Where do we start? Sherlock Holmes with Jude, Jude Law, Law, who was in Contagion with what's her name? Marion Cotillard. Who was in Inception with Joseph Gordon-Levitt? Yeah. Who was in The Dark Knight Rises, Rises with, with Christian, Christian Bale. Bale? Who was, who was in, in the Fighter with Michael? I think those five. I counted like nine. But <laughs> hey, whatever. We'll take it. No, that was under six movies. We'll take it. We'll that might have been six. That, that was our worst one. I'm yeah. Gonna say it. That was our worst one. And we could have gotten there quicker. Ooh. We're gonna skip this one. Who is it? <laughs> We're gonna skip Kevin Spacey. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, just shout out, out to Kevin Spacey. All right, let's do at least one more. This will be five, right? Yeah. Yep. All right, we'll do at least one more. We'll probably keep going. Uh, all right, we got an actress this time, Meryl Streep. Who is she? I've never heard of her. That <laughs> doesn't Meryl Reap. <laughs> Streep. She's been in about eight hundred different movies. Okay. Including. The Devil Wears Prada. I like where you're going with this. Okay. Anne Fast Hathaway. <laughs> she's in Fast and Furious? Yeah, she's uh, Hobbs, what? Jason Statham's mom. Are you serious? Yeah. Oh my... I don't like that one. How do they afford her? Because they can get anyone in those movies, Bob. They okay. make billions of dollars. They make more money than most countries do. Okay, well, that this, that one's easy. No, let's go with Devil Wears I Prada, can... Anne Hathaway, and that she's in Dark Knight Rises. Let's connect <laughs> Christian no, no, Bale. No, no. We, could, we, could go, we could go Devil Wears Prada. Emily Blunt's in that. Um... But no, no, we could go Fast and Furious. Like you said, she's Jason Statham's mom. Jason Statham was... Is in the movie with The Rock, Pain and Game. <laughs> That's quick. We don't, you know... Yeah, we're, no, we, we, we gotta, can do better than that. Yeah. Okay, how about we take it to The Rock realm, but we don't go to Pain and Game. We go around Pain and Game. Because you're telling... There's got to be way more. Someone's been in a movie with The Rock who's also been with Mark The Walden. Rock was in a movie with Jack Black. They were in The Jungle. They, the Jumanji. Yeah, yeah. Jumanji, okay. Okay, and then... I got it. They were in Jumanji together. With Kevin Hart, who was in Get Hard with Will Ferrell. Will Ferrell was in Daddy's Home that 1 was and good. 2. That was good. With them. So what was our What was the math on that one? So it's Fast and Furious. Which I didn't even know she whatever was in Whatever one she's Hobbs in. Hobbs and Shaw. Six, seven, oh. eight. It's one of those. Yep. To The Rock. To The Rock. Yep. That, he would have been in that movie. That's the same movie, though. So that's just to one, right? The Rock uh, to Jumanji. Meryl Streep was in Fast and Furious with The Rock. Rock was in Jumanji. Jumanji with Kevin Hart. With Kevin Hart, who was in Get Hard with Will Ferrell. Will Ferrell was Four in movies. Daddy's Home right. 1 and 2. Killing it. And other guys. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's true. We'll save that for the next one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's do... Uh, the next one is Harrison Ford. We can go okay. right into Star Wars if we want. Which Mark or Wahlberg Indiana was in. Jones. I don't know any other... We could go Shia LaBeouf with the terrible Indiana Jones movie. <laughs> let's go Star Wars, because think about how many fucking movies we have to go off of there. There's a lot of movies, but those actors, actors are typically not. aren't in a lot of other movies, generally speaking. I can't name another Mark Hamill movie. We here, we go... Uh, Let's see with Adam Driver. Harrison Ford was in Indiana Jones 4 with <laughs> Shia LaBeouf. <laughs> yeah. Shia LaBeouf was in Transformers with Optimus Prime. Optimus Prime was in Transformers <laughs> Dark of the Moon with, with Mark, Mark Wahlberg. That was good. Way Perfect. to get Optimus Prime some credit <laughs> there. Wow, that was good. That was quick. My God, this game is so easy. Why yeah. is it six degrees? It should be three degrees. Yeah, this is nothing. All right, should we do one more? I mean, we've, we've already proven that we can do this with anyone. Yeah. We thought we would be six for we'd six. We'd be happy if we could get five. We're six for six right now. Let's end with a bang. Let's get a, let's get a real hard one. Right? Yeah. Let's see what we got. That's weird. I got two somehow. Uh, it's Jackie hmm. Chan and Chris Tucker. Wow. Oh, okay. Man. Have they been in a movie together? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So rush hour. Okay, uh, Chris Tucker, who Silver I, Linings Playbook. If you guys didn't know this, since Rush Hour One came out, this is an incredible statistic. He's, he has been in three movies since Rush Hour One. Two, they are three. Rush Hour Two, <laughs> Rush Hour Three, and Silver Linings Playbook. He made so much money from those movies. So he's been in three movies in twenty years, basically. Um. So okay, so Silver Linings Play Play Playbook Playlist yeah, Playbook Yeah. Playbook. Okay. Playlist was the second one. Silver. <laughs> Silver Linings Playbook, you can either go Brad Cooper or you can go... Jennifer Lawrence. Jennifer Lawrence. Jennifer Lawrence. Bradley Cooper was in The Hangover with... Who's the guy that plays... Uh, Ed Helms? No, the fucking... Mike Tyson. No. <laughs> um, uh, Zach Galifianakis? Zach Galifianakis. Oh, that's not where I was going. Zach Galifianakis. I thought we were trying to get to National Treasure. Let's do it. We can do uh, it. The other guy. The other, the only one of the four. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. okay. Um, uh, Doug. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Doug. So he's in, Bradley Cooper's in Hangover, Hangover with Doug. 
Doug. Doug plays Riley in Riley, uh, National in Treasure. The, National Treasure. So now we got Nick Cage. And we have or the guy. Sean Bean. Yeah, Sean, or Sean Bean. Bean. Sean Bean was in Game of Thrones. Can we go across the pond and bring it back? No way. Because those actors, unless like, what what's Tyrion's name again? That's the only thing, the only Nick American Cage. actor I can think yeah. of in that. Okay, uh, Sean Bean was in Lord of the Rings. Um, God, we're not going to connect that. <laughs> Viggo Mortensen was in Lord of the Rings. He was also in that movie, The Green Book, <laughs> that had... Who was that? Denzel Washington in there with no. him, too? Where are we? We're over six. Who, who are we going off? I, oh, Jackie Chan. Oh, Crush Hour. Okay, shit, my bad. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, Run National Treasure, which is our third or fourth movie. At okay. Um, what, was the, what, what was the actress in that one? What's her name? Uh, She's yeah, famous. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Blanking out at the... Diane Kruger. Okay. She was in a movie with um, Liam Neeson. I can't Nick, Nicholas, we can go off of Nicholas Cage. <laughs> with what? You were telling me they he might have been in a movie with Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> There's got to be. <laughs> you said that about our <laughs> Well, Mark Wahlberg's in so much shit. Um, let's think. Okay, we'll just name. Okay, no problem. Uh, this is how we'll do it. Ben, uh, name five Nick Cage movies on top of your head. <laughs> National Treasure 1, National Treasure 2, <laughs> Face Off. Was he in that? Meryl Streep is in National Treasure 2. What the hell? Is she really? She's Nick Cage's mom. <laughs> Why is she? Why is she oh, yeah, I actually remember mom. that. I remember Why that. Why does she play everybody's mom? Because she's not that good of an actress. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... Okay, so let's go Nick Cage. Let's just... Let's, we'll name some Nick Cage movies. Not a problem. I can name a, a, at least ten, but I'm... Uh, Was he in Face Off, or am I thinking of a John totally Travolta, different person? Uh, in Nick Cage, in Nick Cage, Cage Face yeah. Off, yeah. Um, does John Travolta have a movie with Mark Wahlberg? He's in, uh, what's that Quentin Tarantino movie, Pulp Fiction? Is John Travolta in, there's this one shitty Mark Wahlberg movie. <laughs> <that I know. laughs> the only one? But, you know, it's, it takes, it, oddly enough, it takes place in, like, the Boston Harbor and they're smuggling drugs. <laughs> what the fuck is the name of it? It's about money. Like That's a good movie. Oh, what's up? Counterfeit. Ca- no, it's, uh, something with a C. Yeah. It's, it's not it's counterfeit. counterfeit. Is it? No, it's like, fuck. Conf- it's, wait, it's, the C's not, it's Spencer Confidential. <laughs> I know what movie you're talking about. Yeah. I feel like he might... John Travolta might be in there. No, let's go, back to, let's go back to Nick Cage. Um, we had it with Pulp Fiction. There's got to be a Pulp Fiction actor. Um, Samuel L. Jackson, who was also in every movie ever. Oh, we give it right back to MCU. Uh, to actually make it work. Sam Jackson... Should and we work backwards? Should we figure out what Mark Wahlberg movie we want to pull Connected from? to? Okay, we can try that. from both sides and meet in the middle. Oh, the other guys. Sam Jackson's in the other guys. Well, you're right. Okay, so now let's try to remember okay. what we started with. Uh, so we went Rush <laughs> Hour. Started with Jackie Chan and Chris Tucker, um, which went to Silver Linings so, Playbook. Technic- that's one. The first one is Silver Linings Playbook. Silver Linings Playbook oh, okay. to... Really? The, well, because the generator picked yeah. Chris Tucker and Jackie Chan. Gotcha, Jack okay. So okay, so up? it was Brad we'll Cooper. Brad Cooper to Doug. Hangover to Doug. Which Doug. is still... Doug's, or two movies. Doug to National Treasure. Three. With uh, Nicolas Cage to... Face Off. With Face John Travolta. Face Off with John Travolta. John Travolta to Pulp Fiction with Samuel L. Jackson. Samuel L. Jackson was in the Six. other guys. Six. We got it. Wow. <laughs> that was great. It doesn't get better than That's that. That's a great wow. one to end on. Wow. So, I can't believe we got to that. Good thing Sam Jackson's in every movie. Yeah. We have proven that Six <laughs> Degrees of Mark Wahlberg is a valid game. Yeah. And it should take over the Kevin Bacon one. We are setting new trends culturally, and the next time someone brings up Six Degrees of Kevin Bacon, say why. <laughs> why? why? Who even is that? Is the new Kevin Bacon, as we've established here today. Well, let's move on to a movie that does not star Mark Wahlberg, or Kevin Bacon for that matter. If you listen to last week's episode, we did a top 10 movies of the 2010s. And when we got to the year 2012, there was a movie in particular that caught our attention because Bob claimed it was one of the best movies of the year. <laughs> I, I, and you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to double down. After rewatching it for the podcast, I'm saying it's number one of 2012. That is the number one movie of 2012. I forget what movie we picked that year. 2012. I think we ended up with Argo, if that oh, was the okay. right Yeah. Um, so obviously Ben and I shot that down pretty quick. We're talking about Chronicle. If you don't remember Chronicle, it came out in February 3rd, 2012. As we all know, the best movies come out 
in the last week of January and the first week of February. <laughs> this movie was directed by Josh Trank, who you might know from the 2015 Fantastic Four movie, Fant Four Stick. Okay, that's the, wait what? See now, now you're you're taking cheap shots. You didn't need what to bring movie that is up. That? You didn't need to bring that up. That's Just stating facts. He also wrote. He wrote and directed that movie. He also wrote and directed the new Capone movie starring Tom Hardy, which I haven't seen, but it's been getting mixed reviews. Mm-hmm. Um, this was written by Max Landis, who you might know from writing Bright, the Netflix original in 2017. Or you may remember him from the eight women who stepped forward and accused him of emotional and sexual abuse about one year ago. Okay. Okay, yeah. All so right. let's keep that in mind when Bob defends this <laughs> movie. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> We're, now, anyone, now we're taking cheap shots. Any endorsement of this movie is not an endorsement of Max Landis, who, by all accounts, is a piece of garbage. Yep. Um, this movie stars Dane DeHaan, Alex Russell, and Michael B. Jordan. It made $126.6 million on a $12 million budget. It has a 7.0 on IMDb, a 69 on Metacritic, Certified fresh with an 85% oh. critic score mm. and a 71% audience score. Mm. So, I mean, we're not too worried about spoilers. Um, but before we like get into the movie, obviously we had pretty strong feelings on this movie going into it. So, you know, take yourself back a day or two or however long ago you watched it. What was your memory of this movie from the first time or first few times you'd seen it? Bob, obviously you thought it was good, but what made you think it was good? For me, previews. so I remember when the f- previews came out for this. And it just looked really interesting from the previews. Like, I don't know, it, was, it seemed like a new, fresh concept. And, like, found footage movies were super hot at the time. But, um, I don't know, I, went, I saw it in theaters, loved it. It was, yeah, I really liked it. One of my favorite movies of that year. And then, I didn't watch it for a long time. Sometimes it's on TV, sometimes it's on, like, FX. And I'll always throw it on when it's there. But... Really, what brought me back to is when we were making the list last week. I was looking through like movies that came out in 2012. I was like, "Oh fuck, Chronicle!" Like that was a that was a fucking good ass movie. So obviously, I, I brought it up. If you're one of the, the five listeners from last week, you know, <laughs> you know like how we talked about it last week. And then yeah, because we had such a divisive like you guys, Jeremy, you said you didn't like it. I don't remember if you saw it. No, I had seen it. I- yeah, but you didn't like it. So that that's what brought us, brought us to doing it this week and then when i rewatched it i was like oh yeah like this is i love this movie like it's awesome it totally it brought me back to the first time i saw it and yeah i like it it's good I, it's a good movie like i said best movie of 2012 <laughs> is that what you actually landed on i, I think remember. i think i don't we remember what I ended up picking, you out of it but but after rewatching it i've come back and i've, I've declared <laughs> for me i just always thought it was like it was a cool concept but the movie itself i just think wasn't a good movie that's what i remember going into it and kind of just double down on it after watching but yeah i didn't have as strong opinions as bob like in the pro column but i just remember like michael b jordan's a cool actor i probably wouldn't have even watched this again if he wasn't in this one movie. of his i think i don't might not be true on this but i think that's one of his first movies yeah, yeah. it's yeah, a star making role that, but i didn't i didn't know yeah I, I mean he was big in like friday night lights i don't know what gets him he, bigger but he looks young in chronicle though he does look young so i would assume yeah early in his career jerry what do you what, what do you got to say about it so i i remember seeing this movie once because I didn't see it in a the theater or anything, but I, it had gotten good reviews. I understand that, at least generally speaking, that I was in the minority. Of like, if the topic ever comes up of what's a movie that you don't like that most people like, this is the one I point to. Because I genuinely never understood. I'd only seen it once, to be fair. And rewatching it, I realized I had forgotten most of the movie. But after watching it one time in 2012 or whatever, I was like, this isn't a good movie. It wasn't even enjoyable. I would argue it's bad. So if I think it's bad, why do all these other people think it's so good? And I read a bunch of reviews on IMDb. People think it's like the second coming of Christ. Like there it's are a good who movie. Would die for this movie. And I just never understood it. So and all that being said, I did go into it with as open of a mind as I could. Granted, I did find out that Max Landis wrote it before I rewatched it, so that might have tainted my viewing of it yeah, a little bit. Yeah, okay. Well, okay, let me ask you, though. What what don't you like about it? Like, what are your We're going to get into that. We're gonna okay, get into all right. That. We're still, like, building into our rewatching of it. Um, so just generally speaking, after we just all rewatched it in the last few days, Bob, you already kind of gave us your opinion, but you're you're doubling down. You think it's even better than you remember it or just as good as you remember I'm gonna, it? I'm going to say just as good as I remember it, but I remembered it as, like, a 9 out of 10. Okay. So, ben, I, I think I'm going to say just as bad as I remember. I don't I'm not as negative as as you are on it, but yeah, I, I didn't like it that that much. 
at all. At all. <laughs> so me not remembering most of the plot or major plot points, I will say it's just as bad as I remembered it. Because I rem- all I remember is leaving the movie or, you know, finishing watching the movie and thinking that wasn't a good movie. And that's exactly how I felt watching it again. I finished it and I'm like, that wasn't a good movie. So, Bob, if you'll, if you'll entertain us with just a very quick plot recap, tell us, because I don't know if many people listening will have seen Chronicle. If you don't want it to be spoiled and you're worried about Chronicle spoilers, you can pause it now. It's on Prime to rent. Mm-hmm. Um, but, Bob, if you can just give us a very kind of basic plot outline for Chronicle. So, it's basically, it's centered around... Uh, Dane Duhan's character, who has a just a fucking awful home life, um, and his cousin, and Michael B. Jordan. Basically, it's it's a found footage movie. Uh, Dane Duhan is filming everything, and he ends up, they go to a party, they find this anomaly in the ground, they decide to, as curious high schoolers would do, just, uh, just go into a hole. dive right into the <laughs> hole. Uh, they go down, uh, and basically they end up getting superpowers but more specifically telekinesis and uh the rest of the movie kind of goes around them building them that up building up their powers learning what they can and can't do dane duhan's really like his, his home life is breaking down his so. character's a little little unhinged a little off um for some reason he gravitates to having these powers more than the rest of them he starts to get a little more advanced than them um as i said he's pretty mentally unstable and chaos ensues um, turns out he ends up going ape shit crazy at the end, <laughs> and um, he dies. <laughs> Which is honestly okay. As much, was, uh, as much as you guys talk shit about the, the movie, how do you how do you feel about that kill? That's badass. That was the a telekinesis cool kill. spear through the heart. I'll give you that. That, that was that, that was, was cool. good. That was cool. But anyway, uh, it's it's more like I felt like I was watching a Dane, Superman movie with all the da- damage to downtown. Yeah, but Dane Duhan is uh, going through. He basically falls apart. And his after his mom dies, his mom yeah. dies and he loses his shit. Yeah, but it's it's sort of it's it it's a like it's a like this kid should not have ever ended up with superpowers, mm-hmm. and he doesn't handle it well and ends up destroying a lot of things, killing a few people that are close to him, and uh yeah that's that's really it. If I had to give like a quick synopsis of it, I think that was fair. So now I'll ask you, what about this movie is good? <laughs> See, I, I, it's just so confusing for me that you guys don't like it because, like, I don't know what isn't good about it. If if your biggest, in, okay, so this is, I said that I liked it just as much when I rewatched it. Now, the first time I saw it was in 2012. I saw it in theaters, and found footage movies were they were all the rage. Everything was a fucking found footage movie. Yeah, and if, if like one of your gripes with this movie is that it's found footage, so you have to suspend your disbelief, dude. It's a fucking found footage movie. Why the fuck is he recording all that stuff? I don't know. If, if, well, if your problem is how, why, and for, like, wh- how and why, why is the biggest this? reason that's stupid? You don't like that it's found footage. I also yes. don't like that he got but that's the camera the, the day before. It's not like just, he just randomly started this hobby. and you, then, that, But that's, like, that, like, the minutia like that, I don't mind. I can get over that. Found footage movies in general, I think, are bad. But you and have to I suspend your disbelief to enjoy them, though. I'll, I'll give that to you. I can suspend disbelief as long as it's, like convincing like, but there's a okay well, name one scene where you uh, i think they do a good job justifying why he's recording i that's what disagree i disagree more. with yeah i have a couple of quotes here from the first 90 seconds of the movie okay <laughs> this is dane duhan i bought a camera and i'm filming everything from here on out <laughs> he was talking to his Cousin. dad who, his no he's talking to his dear i know what you're talking about at the beginning of the movie where he's talking to his dad who's an abusive oh, fucking yeah. He told his dad that because he's like, stop fucking harassing me. I'm recording this shit, like basically threatening him, like I could show this to the, to the police. He's trying to get his dad off his back. I'll defend every one of them. That's fair. <laughs> and I'm, that's not even my main point. Okay. Because I'm, I'm going to give that one to you. Yep. It's him recording the door that his dad's trying to get into, mm-hmm. clearly in like an alcoholic rage. And he's like, I bought a camera and I'm going to start recording stuff. Mm-hmm. Makes sense. Then he starts recording his cousin driving him to school. And his cousin's like, why are you recording me? And he says, I don't know, I'm filming things now. He, that's, the, that's the writer justifying the found footage basis of okay, this entire but, movie in one unthought of, un, not even thoughtful, flimsy, 
it's happening because it's happening. It, but you could call it flimsy. So if you read that line out loud like you just did, it sounds stupid, you know? Like it, it also sounds, it sounds stupid silly. when Dane Duhon reads it. No, but, it you, but the way you got to look at it is like, this know. guy's weird. He's socially awkward, and if he's just like, oh, I'm just going to record stuff. He's a weirdo, dude. Of course he's going to do some weird stuff like just the record. The first 30 minutes is everyone asking him why he's recording. His cousin's like, please don't record. People are going to make fun of you and bully you. And he's like, I don't care. And then he gets made fun of and bullied, and he's like, why are people bullying me? <laughs> yeah. It's like, because you're recording everyone. He, you, but it's he's just a strange... Okay, but th- well, like I said, he's a strange guy, and it's a strange thing to do. But at the same time, how I said you have to suspend disbelief. If it's a found footage movie, we got to have fucking footage. I I, I can see... I'm yeah. saying, I'm saying it seems don't a make little it a found footage movie. I, I think okay. found footage movies are stupid. I, I think that most found footage movies are stupid. I think this one does it about as good as you could. I'm not going to disagree and say that I like found footage movies. I don't enjoy them. This one I do like, but... They have it be a thing that, like, advances the plot that he's filming things, but it, it just didn't need to be in there. That's how I feel. You could have made it... Why does the blogger... First of all, it's 2012. Vlogging is a thing. Why does the blogger record everything? There's no justification there. Okay. Another girl at this high school... That's what I didn't understand. The camera Why doesn't she get blog. bullied? And it also, she also records when people go to her front door and have conversations with her? This this still goes back to the suspend disbelief, but if this is a thing you're not liking about the movie, then I think that's a weak argument to why it's bad. It's a yeah, it's stupid. It's stupid that they're recording stuff. Movie. But it's stupid they're recording stuff. Yeah, like, why does that girl record? But at the same time, when I was watching it, it doesn't take me out of the movie. Every time it does. See, I th- I think if it's only the found footage, that, you're, that like the found footage uh, genre of movie that it is, if that's what's taking you out, like, okay, so if, if all of your gripes are because of the found footage, no. I think it's weak. Okay, well, we're we'll done. <laughs> I'm not done griping about Okay, the okay, keep going, keep going. I'll try to justify. When he's in the hospital towards the very end before the big climax. I know, I know where you're going. Why does a nurse or doctor set up a tripod with a camera facing his hospital bed? One. At, why? One. Okay, that, that is the. Oh, yeah, why? That is the. <laughs> I, I, you know what? That I'll, stuff is all over this movie, and it's just, it totally takes me out of it. That's the time. only one on my rewatch <laughs> where I was just like, that seems a little unnecessary. If it's found footage, and I'm not saying all found footage movies are bad. If you're going to do found footage, it's an added hurdle. And you need to clear that hurdle for it to be believable, passable, watchable. And I think they are running through every hurdle they put in front of them. One, one of the, th- the, the, the scene in particular, I think, is the one that is hard to defend because it is kind of silly that there's a camera there. But one of the nuances of this movie that I actually just caught on a rewatch, that there's another, one of the reasons why people like it, there's so many little things that you don't even notice, and this warrants rewatching. So he's obviously crazy, and like when he gets the powers, he's, he's getting more confident. Like... He gets into that thing, like the survival of the fittest. He thinks he is above everybody else. Above humans, so he should be allowed to kill but humans. But the way he starts to look at himself at the end is like, it, he's the star of the show. And if you know, if you watch it in the rewatching, that camera is getting closer and closer to him. Almost in like a like a movie, like like the bad guy, like where they'll zoom in on him. If you know, if you look, the scene, or the uh, the shot from the hotel, or not hotel, the hospital security cam, he's, pu- he's awake. He's awake the whole time his dad's talking to him. Maybe not the whole time, but he's, he wakes up at some point. And you can almost tell, but he's bringing the camera closer. You can see the camera moving. Like, he's using his powers. He's trying to... And there's another scene earlier that I really love, too, is when he's robbing the... uh... I just saw this, too. I couldn't believe I missed it. When he's robbing the convenience store, one of the shots from the the security cam, you see his camera floating in the background behind him. Like, to me, that's cool. Like, there's cool stuff about it and like that you might not like found footage, but those multiple camera angles and stuff like that make it feel like it's... Like, it's an actual world. Like, there's things going on, like, from these different camera angles where you're catching... Like, when the cam- like when it's when there's more than one camera in one of the scenes and you see it, something like that, is one of the things that makes it cool. I agree that that part is cool, where you're seeing the security footage and the camera's floating behind him. But given how little thought seemed to go into every other aspect of the movie, I was almost surprised it was there. And it wasn't an oversight, like, so much of this movie feels like it was. I can, okay, but but what what's just spurred this entire conversation is you talking about the where the cops or the whatever it's the nurses set up that camera in the hotel room or not? Why do I keep saying hotel? <laughs> hospital. Um, that's the one. That's the one that when I rewatched, I was like, mm. but the movie's got to happen. So, so I, I think I just hated the how fast it deteriorated after Michael B. Jordan dies. He just that's kind of when he starts to become bad. Also, 
Did, did lightning strike Michael B. Jordan, or did Dane DeHaan kill Michael B. Jordan? I think you're supposed to read it like Dane DeHaan killed him. Right? That was Using lightning? Yeah. yeah. Right. Or, yeah, you somehow manipulated the lightning or whatever. Or made okay. him move. They were already or... in a storm. That's what I thought, yeah. but, yeah, so he kills him, and it's just, like, a, kind of a dumb reason to. Like, Michael B. Jordan hasn't been a dick to him at all. Like, he... They didn't even try to make it seem what, like what he's a bad friend. What caused that, though, was his stepfather saying, those people don't even like you. No, like, he was beating him his regular dad, right? I, yeah, you're right. But yeah, just his dad. But him beating him down, saying, like, those those people aren't even like your friends. Him. Like, what do you mean? So that... And, and he's never had friends his whole life, so to him it's weird to have friends. So his when his dad says that, he's just like, you're right, what the fuck? These people don't like me. I've never had friends my entire life. So I just didn't buy it, though, because Michael B. Jordan was, like, the nicest person in the world. He was being so nice to Dana Howard. Yeah. Like, he... Like for that magic show they did, like to make Dane, I like that scene a lot. Yeah, yeah. I thought that was cool. I like like the magic to show make scene. him popular, make him the star of the show, and exactly. almost look, make Michael Michael B. Jordan look bad. Bad. Yeah, yeah, like he played the side character mm-hmm. in that. But I that's why I didn't get like he would not kill him, and then he immediately is like, "I miss you." I forget his name, but what's Michael B. Jordan's name? Oh, uh, Steve. Steve. Yeah, Steve. he's like, "I miss you, Steve." But like, he you killed him, and just the whole downtown scene, it just made me feel like. I don't know. I I just didn't buy him wanting to kill everyone in Seattle at that moment because it, because his cousin saved his dad. Why wouldn't he just be going to try to kill the dad then? I think it was like a domino effect, and I think his mom dying and then his father blaming him for her death. Yeah, and his mom was really the only like nice person, good though, person yeah. in his life. And you can even you can even argue. Yeah, Steve is really good to him too, but. He, Dane Duhan doesn't understand that because of his... And the cousin's nice to him. That's what I don't know. Really here's my here's my take that I, I don't know if the, now's the time to get into it or not, but I'll just slightly... I'll bring it up right now, is that Dane Duhan, at the whole movie, you sort of sympathize with him because he has such a shitty life, and he clearly ends up being the bad guy at the end, but he had, like, in his mind, the way, like, I mean, the downtown scene where he goes a little crazy is, like, amped up to 10. But, like, when everything goes back, like, when he throws his fucking dad out the window after he just blamed him for his mother's I death, understood that. Like You that... understand why he's doing the bad stuff. Yes. But his cousin is kind of a fucking dick. And he's supposed to be, like, he's, they kind of paint him as the good guy, but if you really think about the stuff he does, he's a fucking asshole. They, all right. I, mean, if anything, I wish they would have killed him he's supposed not to be, Michael B. He's Jordan. supposed to be the good guy, sort of, like, the way they paint it, but if you look at it, like, everything he's doing, he's kind of, like, an asshole. He's a dick. He's mean to his cousin. And he has a random love interest, though. I don't. Is he mean to his cousin? He's just like, go be independent, dude. We don't have to do everything together. He, like, at that party, he's like, hey, just go hang out. No, but he, was, but he was saying that because he doesn't want his him cousin. Around. Because he's going to bring him down. He's going to make true, him yeah. look bad. Yeah. I, I got a lot he of He sets him up for failure. Here. The first one I'll just say is, like, yes, Dane Duhon obviously has a terrible home life and everything like that. His dad is almost, like, comically abusive. Like... Again, most of most of my besides the found footage thing, most of my gripes are with the writing. It seems lazy almost throughout the entire movie. To make his father so over the top abusive, I think is lazy writing. To make him just the, the I'm worst sure those me. people exist. I'm sure kids have grown up in a similar situation with someone as abusive as that. But it. It's like as subtle as a brick to the face when they try to tell you that he has a bad home <laughs> life and his dad's abusive. It just immediately has him. I mean, that's there's no subtlety in this movie anywhere, but in this case in particular, it's it's so over the top. No, that's how I agree with you there because like they made the movie ninety minutes. They could have made it two hours and like kind of made it more nuanced than just like his dad's just the worst person in the world. But like that's why I well, don't think it's the. Like, worst movie in the world, like you do, Jared, but, like, I... I wouldn't say the worst movie in the world. I don't like it, and it's not good. <laughs> no, but, I like... Think they just have, like you just said, it's only a 90-minute runtime. They have to... That's I what I'm saying, though. I think they so. should have tried to make it longer and just to try to make more character building into the dead and make it, like, make us understand it's, like, a real situation. I don't know. It just... It did seem kind of... A lot of it's implied, though. I mean, you see him being shitty, but there's also, like... He's not on screen that much. His dad's only in, what, like, three or four scenes for, like, yeah. a total of, like two minutes at most but then he has all these conversations with michael b jordan where they've only been on screen together for four minutes and michael b jordan's like oh is it your dad is he abusive to you? well no well no <laughs> Do you that's have a bad home life but like, that's the that's the found footage aspect of it because if you think about it when they when they went down to the hole and they pick back up when they're using their powers that's like weeks after there's like we're just seeing the cuts of like what he's filmed I, we don't know the timetable of it. Like they could, he could have been friends with Michael B. Jordan. This could, I mean, I don't think it took place over a year, but like they say, they hung out every single day. 
it's been at least a few months. You know what I mean? I would assume just because we don't see Michael B. Jordan talking about his home life with him doesn't mean that it's not implied that they haven't talked about it off camera. So, I mean, that, that's the way I look at it. I guess that's fair, but then it's almost like contradicted when the movies seems to imply that everything was on camera. Maybe, there, maybe there's that's a few of the cuts. There's a few of those right. cuts that that you can tell there's been a passage of time, but I mean, it's not super realistic for him to have everything recorded. Like another cut that just came to mind is when they were flying. So you get. You get them learning to fly in that, like, parking lot or whatever, and then the next scene you get is they're fucking, they've clearly mastered it. Right. And they don't play that like it just happened, like, a few, yeah, in a few true. hours. That clearly took them a little bit of time, but they probably I, were... I took it as it was, like, 15 minutes later. No. I think it, to me... Like, they went I home, they got their it. jackets on, and then they went into the clouds. To but, actually try it more, yeah. But it, it, it doesn't, I don't know, to me, I think that's... See, that's what I did like. I liked the, like, I thought the special effects of it were actually pretty good in this movie. I know it's only eight years old. What was old, the budget on it? 12 million, 12 million. Which is why I think, like, even... That's even more impressive to me. Yeah. It was only 12 million dollars. And I thought they did a pretty good job with all of that, and that's why, like, the concept of the movie is really good to me. But it, it just comes back to, like, you and, like, what, saying, like, the writing is just... I don't know. They just took easy way out to, I didn't, like... I didn't think the graphics... Really oh, CG you didn't like it? Good. I thought it was good when they were flying. The flying looked fine, except, like, their initial ascent, or when yeah, you, the was... cousin goes in and out of a window... I, I can, you can yeah. almost see the strings that they were pulling on the I other can, side of the I wall. I can sympathize, I the guess. The Lego building. I liked awful. when like, they first start with the baseball, and like that's when Dana Han gets it to the float. Like, I, I thought that was pretty good. Off a $12 million budget, I mean, it's clearly CGI. Nobody's going to talk about how good this CGI is, but I think for the budget... That wasn't even one of my points against it, by the way. <laughs> just giving my opinion. I think the CGI... I mean, it's it's eight years old at this but point. I, just like I don't the, think it ages. It doesn't... The CGI doesn't take you out of the movie. I agree. It's clearly CGI, but like... It's, I agree. Yeah. It, it, again, it's not one of my points against not the horrible. movie. It's just... I didn't think it looked very good. Um, so, like, another lazy writing thing. The cousin... His character seems to be one of the only characters that has any development or growth. But you don't see any of it. He just tells you. He tells his girlfriend, basically, is how they get that across. He's like... Basically, to her face, I'm not the same person anymore. I've changed. I want to be better now. It does but say no, exactly that's why that. he's shitty though, because he's the, he is the same person. He's uh, he's fucking trying to get this girl to get with this girl, and he's in the world of the movie. They seem to buy it. Like the 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 movie thinks that he's made this change in development, and they're trying to convince you. They didn't convince me that he's actually a different person. I mean, yeah. That he, they didn't he's convince. A, he's been reading all this philosophy and. No, I I think they didn't convince me either. I think the philosophy. That's why you think he sucks. Yeah, that's I think why... the philosophy stuff is BS. I think he's the same guy that whenever months before this movie took place in in their world that he's the same fucking guy and I think the philosophy stuff's bullshit and I think that he's like, the same probably douchey dude and he's actively trying to like act different because he wants to get with this girl again, or whatever. That's why it would have made more sense to me of having Dane kill his cousin instead, because Michael B. Jordan was like a, I thought a better character, just because he was like yeah. the nicer person. It would have made more sense to make him the hero. I think I think them killing Michael B. Jordan is more just because like, I don't know, maybe they're trying to tug at the heartstrings because he was clearly very popular in school. He was. They like, needed it to be a more. Yeah, they he wouldn't have been sad more, if he died. More impactful. If they killed his cousin, it'd be like, well, he was kind of whatever. A dick. Yeah, he's kind of a dick, <laughs> but he was a stoner. <laughs> That's the thing I liked about the movie the most is that Dane Duhon ends up being the bad guy and his cousin ends up being the good guy. Not, yeah, not even the good guy, just has to be. But I sympathize more with Dane Duhon <laughs> than I do with the <laughs> quote unquote good guy. So like, Dane Duhon's. You can go. No, I, I had nothing off that. Dane Duhon's, you know, transition, his character arc going from, you know, quote unquote good, you know, just kind of mm -hmm. whatever dude to the antagonist, the villain of the mm -hmm. movie, How, because he read a book about apex predators in his senior year of high school, he'd never heard the term apex predator before? I think that <laughs> it's, but the way they, they, they do kind of do his uh, transition pretty quickly, but it's the little That's stuff. That's what I didn't like. It's the little stuff leading up that makes you know that that was already always inside him. When he pushes the truck off the road, when he was just trying to like... They were all joking around. I feel and like, like that, that, that and then the Michael B. Jordan thing are the only two things, and then he's just all of a sudden wants to kill but he everyone. But he doesn't know how to, like, handle himself. Like, he's he's unstable. Like, that, that scene where he pushes, he almost fucking kills the guy when he pushes the truck off the road. 
he was just joking around with his friends. They were they were moving the car in the scene before. Yeah. And he's just like, oh, like Steve moved the car. Like, oh, let me try and like one up him because he doesn't know how to have friends. He doesn't know how to interact with people. He's goes overboard because he doesn't understand what he's doing, and he ends up killing a guy. And he's one of the lines that comes up after. He's like, it's not a big deal. He doesn't realize what he just did. <laughs> yeah. Because he's 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 so far gone even early on in the movie. And when he kills Steve. And he's at the he's at the funerals talking about or not the funeral he's visiting his grave later talking about how much he misses him, and almost in a way like he didn't he wasn't the guy that killed him like yeah that, he he's I, they paint it as he's unstable. That's what made me confused because he never said like I'm sorry like I it's that's not, how I didn't know if he actually killed him or not. But like what you guys are saying where it seems sudden where he just becomes the bad guy and wants to kill everybody, it's not sudden because they hint at it throughout the movie that this guy's clearly fucked up, but. It's not like a. It's not like a like a this. It's like a like he's really fucked up. He's really fucked up. He's really fucked up. Boom! Now yeah. he's super fucked up. It's not like a. That's what I yeah. That's so I can it. agree with you there, but at the same time, it's throughout the movie. Like it's this guy's. It's implied. So let's say we we can concede. We can agree on this point. So then I'll ask you, what's the moral of this story? What did we learn? I'll say, in conjunction with this, the ending. Is stupid and dumb and lackluster even for an already for a movie I already didn't care for I thought the ending was particularly bad you mean the the scene in Tibet yeah but with that what is the moral of the story what what are, are the characters better off now did anyone in the movie learn anything did think, you as a viewer learn anything I don't think any of the characters are better off like all the cousin did was just go to Tibet and then leave like he didn't actually learn anything I don't really think there's supposed to be a moral <laughs> I mean, that's lazy writing. <laughs> <laughs> no, dude, you know how many movies? There, there's not. You're, but well, I don't. It, it, maybe not even a moral. What are some of the themes of this movie? I think for me, what I come out of it with is, I've I've said it a few times, is that like, I think, the brothers or not the brother, the cousin's kind of a dick, and people think he's a good guy, but he's in danger. I don't. It's it's more to make it's supposed to make you question. I, mean, I just said that there's not really more, but it's supposed to make you question your morals. Like, Dane Duhan, like, why is he doing all that stuff? Just because he has the shitty home life? Yeah. I, like, it's like, okay, is that justified? And even the way he talks about being an apex predator, um, is he not? Like, I mean, I don't know. You could maybe, for the sake of the movie, entertain the thought of, like, if this guy can fucking do all this stuff, I mean, why is he not the apex predator? You know what I mean? I'm, for me personally, trying to pull any themes or morals out of this is me filling in blanks for the movie left them it's not it's not me pulling out themes that aren't obviously stated or executed well because they're subtle it's because they're either not there or they're only pieced in there and they're not really executed well i mean you could say with great power comes great responsibility you could say that yeah. but nothing in the movie really it is a found footage movie, though, because it's supposed to just be, like, a snapshot of this time period for these people that was being recorded, and if you take a snapshot of my life and something that happened to me over however it's long it's going to necessarily you're not going to necessarily point. have a moral. I don't think it's designed to have a moral, or I don't think anyone's supposed to come out of it any differently, any of the characters in the movie. That's all fine with me. My, I guess just my biggest gripe is I just wish they would have took more time to, like, build it up to make me actually believe that he would have... So you want it to be longer. <laughs> Not in that sense, but one like, of my yeah. favorite parts about this movie is that it's, it's under so short. Minutes. <laughs> it was really short, wasn't it? Like an hour twenty-five. It was yeah. really short, but. No, that I, I'm not. I feel like I'm in between you guys. Like you, you <laughs> hate the movie and you love the I movie. Love it, but, yeah. but no, I. I mean, I wouldn't discourage people from watching it. Though. I still think it's like a cool idea. I just didn't think the plot and movie itself was a great movie, but cool concept. I think it was lazily written. The found footage genre, after the Blair Witch Project, I mean that's the idea behind the Blair Witch Project was we're gonna create a movie. This was also in 1999, pre-internet. We were too young to really, you know, be into that movie. Be into all this. We were a little too young to really appreciate the Blair Witch Project, but they, it was a shoestring budget. They said we're gonna do a found footage movie, and that's gonna be like one of the main elements of this movie is that these kids go out to. Uh, they're interviewing people about a murderer and then they go into the woods and then they didn't tell the actors what they were doing the directors and producers and everyone just like went and fucked with them in the woods so it was pretty genuine and then the marketing on top of that convinced people that it was real 
that's fine. There was an idea. They executed it well. Whoever made the decision to make this a found footage movie, I don't know why, and they weren't up to the task. It clearly. could come off of what you just said about the Blair Witch Project, though, how it had a shoestring budget. I and mean, this was only a $12 million budget. and I'm guessing when that budget was approved, though, they had they proposed it as a found footage movie. I don't know. I think a lot of the times, at least when found footage movies were very popular, I mean, think about it. You don't... It's... You don't need that many... It seems like it'd be cheaper to make a found footage movie, right? And when they were super popular at the time Chronicle came out, I think it'd probably be easier to get this movie greenlit if you say, hey, it's a found footage movie, we're going to make it for $12 million, than saying, like, hey, can you give us, uh, like, 500 fucking million dollars to make this movie? Like, <laughs> Well, then I guess my main argument would then be you shouldn't get a movie greenlit on a gimmick. It should be based so can on you a good okay, story. Okay, but... <laughs> Okay, but you, God, you guys are so far What apart. do you guys not? Okay, so like, say it wasn't a found footage. No, movie. just talk to Jeremy at this point. You're <laughs> okay, just talking but say about it wasn't a found footage movie and it was filmed like a regular movie. The writing's still weak. I think it's lazy writing for the most part. Yeah, I don't think it's necessarily the found footage that really. I think the reason it comes off to you as lazy writing is just because everything happens so quickly, and they. That's ha- my. That's mine. I don't know if J- yeah, Jeremy. I mean, that's a big part of it. <laughs> I mean, if you're gonna sit there and analyze every line, I feel like you can come up with that. But like, but I don't know. So okay, but here's another question. Do you so you do you like the concept? Not the found footage, the actual concept, the just story. On, on like a one sentence, three kids find yeah, you know, get telekinetic powers and then basically the question is what happens if you give a school shooter telekinesis? <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> sure. I think you could do something good. And with do you that. think any of them like perform badly in the movie? Um acting wise. I don't think the cousin's great. The cousin's not great. Dane Duhan I think is good even though he's like he's for the role he's playing, it's good. Yeah. Even if, as, like, the character seems, like, annoying or whatever, that's what he's going for. Mm-hmm. Michael B. Jordan was good. He's, I mean, he's, just, he's playing a super charismatic high schooler, and he's yeah. one of the most charismatic people <laughs> put on film. So, yeah, I didn't think any of the performances were that, were that bad. So you do need this movie to be longer. I need it to be written by someone else and that's, not yeah. be I, I understand. <laughs> I understand your gripes with it. And my writing issues predate me knowing who the writer was. So that, I mean, that, sure, yeah. comp adds to it, but I'm not saying it's written poorly because the writer is because a piece of shit. Yeah. I'm saying it's written poorly because he's a piece of shit and a bad writer. <laughs> I understand the gripes with it, and it doesn't change my mind at all, and I don't think it's going to change yours, but it's weird because I was about to just say that this movie's divisive, but like it's liked by a lot of people. It, I'm yeah. clearly so, in the minority. Yeah, I'm more in the middle, but yeah. I mean, I think you can go into it, and I mean, if you're if you're one of the five people listening, I think <laughs> four go, of you are gonna like it. Yeah, go no, go in and watch it because honestly, like I'd like to, I'd li- I I don't know, I don't bring this movie up in conversation as much as I should, <laughs> and I I'm, I'm like curious what other people think of it because I am too actually. Yeah, because I mean, this movie should just be on Netflix. I don't know, yeah. it sucked that it was just on Prime. This but. though, I will say, if you say it were on Netflix, it, 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 people would probably watch. It. I agree. It would be trending on Netflix. I agree that people would want to watch this movie again. It's, I'm not going to call it an underrated movie, but it's a movie that I feel like a lot of people don't think of, and whether you like it or you don't like it, it's sort of like just happened. buried. Like, yeah, it's, yeah, like you said, it sort of just happened, and it's interesting the way we, I mean, how we ended up watching this movie, a random movie from 2012, <laughs> yeah. what we reviewed this week, but I think that's almost, not the, like, the lasting impact of it, but it's like, I don't know, it's almost, to me, it's like a sleeper hit, like, it's not many people... Like, when I was making my list, I was like, oh, fuck, Chronicle, I absolutely love that movie, forgot about it. But, looking back on it now, it's still one of my favorite movies. And it could be for anybody listening, it might be the same exact thing, you know? It's it's definitely a sleeper. I definitely think me and Jeremy, and Jeremy more so is in the minority, <laughs> but no, I, I, I just don't think it's the greatest movie ever like you do. But overall, I, I mean, I would encourage people to watch this movie. Yeah, I'd say check it out, for sure. Form your own opinion on it. But, I mean, listening to what yeah, I said, true. listening to what Jeremy said, listening to what Ben said, and, I don't know. Bob's like the the angel on the one shoulder, yeah. and Jeremy's the devil about <laughs> yeah. this movie. Uh, obviously, anyone listening is entitled to their own opinion. You're not wrong for liking this movie, even if I want to imply that Bob <laughs> is wrong for liking this movie. <laughs> That's just for the sake of entertainment. But, obviously, you can like whatever movie you like. Um, ben, I, obviously you didn't speak as much. Are there any kind of final thoughts you had on uh, Chronicle? Michael B. Jordan. You could tell from this movie Michael B. Jordan was going to be like a huge movie star. Uh, good concept, I thought. Agree with Bob on that. Bad writing, agree with Jeremy on that. But 
I mean, I could see myself watching this movie again in like five years. I don't think it's a movie yeah. I'll never watch again. That's how I feel about it. Bob, I know how you feel about Closing it. Arguments. <laughs> Bob, we should let Bob get the last word on it. No, no, no. I, I mean, I, to me, like, like everything you said isn't going to sway me. I still like it. It's still going to be one of my favorite movies. And I was actually super amped that we ended up watching it this week because it's one I forgot about. I was excited to talk about it. Yeah, and I think I was excited to talk about it. <laughs> but, but it's almost good. See, this is inter- That's like that's the beauty of what we're doing, and that's the beauty of movies is that we can be we can be dis de- 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 <laughs> it's it's not a like it's not I split to down say the this middle. Word. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what I'm trying to say. I completely lost it, dude. I think I'm drunk. <laughs> okay, I would if uh, for me the lasting impact of this movie is Sleeper Hit. If you haven't seen it, you definitely have to check it out. And I guess form your own opinion. We obviously have two ends of a spectrum right here with me and Jeremy, and we have been. Kind right, of in the, right in the middle, <laughs> but um, yeah, I think it's one that you should check out, and it, you can probably go either way on it. Depends. It depends what you like. It depends what you're interested in. It depends on a how lot much of you like Dean DeHaan. Yeah, and I love him. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, my my final thoughts. Obviously, I didn't care for it. I don't want to sway people into not giving it a try. You should go into every movie with an open mind. I would. I mean, we only have four to five people listening and nobody tweeting at us, but if you did want to tweet at us and let us know what you thought about this movie, maybe we'll find out that I am actually, for sure, in the minority, even with the Big Movie Boys listeners. I'm going to make, like, 50 Twitter accounts. (laughs) (laughs) That would be so funny, yeah. Um, So with all that being said, again, I'll encourage everyone to go to blacklivesmatters.carrd.co. Again, it'll be the first link in the description. The second link will be to the Business Insider article about Just Mercy with all the links to the different platforms that include that movie. And we'll see you next week.